Hello everyone, welcome to VLSI Academy. This is 25th lecture and today we will understand about recovery and removal checks. Alright, let's get started. So recovery and removal checks are asynchronous checks that are used to ensure the proper timing of asynchronous pin on the flip-flop. In general, a flip-flop has set and reset pins which when become active puts the flip-flop in a predefined state that could be either 0 or 1. So to ensure that these signals are timed properly in the design, we have recovery and removal checks. So let us begin with the understanding of removal check. Assume that we have released a asynchronous control signal. So a re removal timing check will ensure that there is an adequate time between an active clock edge and the release of the asynchronous signal. So by definition, this check actually ensures that control signal is released well after the active clockage so that clockage will have no effect of using this signal so let's assume it by the waveform so if we take the waveform here let's say this is your active clockage that means you pressed the asynchronous button either before or after it so let's assume that you have to press at least after waiting for certain amount of time that is let's say t so t here is actually the your removal time that means you have to at least wait for this much amount of time before your control signal is released or you can say at least this much amount of time you have to wait so this check is based on the removal time specified for asynchronous pin of the flip-flop you can actually relate it to a hold check that is it is a minimum amount of time that it should be wait uh, there so it is similar to your hold time except that this is on a asynchronous pin of a flip-flop let's understand it in the circuit here so this is your clock and this is driving this combo logic this combo logic is actually driving an asynchronous signal cdn here this is your clock waveform and if we make a waveform for CDN with respect to this removal time, so it should not change within this removal time after the clock edge. So let's say clock edge is here, active clock edge. So it should at least change earliest by this time with respect to this. That is the earliest change that you can expect in the CDN signal. This is your CDN signal waveform. At least it should wait for this much amount of time before changing again so that is your you can say a hold check for asynchronous signal hold check for asynchronous signal asynchronous signal now let us look at the timing report for this so if you see that if you have paid, paid attention then this is the falling edge triggered flip-flop that is this is negative edge triggered flip-flop and this is positive edge triggered flip-flop and this is a half cycle path so it would actually be starting at half of the clock period so assume that if the clock period is 12 so it would be starting at 6 so that is half cycle path in previous video we have already explained that how the half cycle path timing report looks like and how is it analyzed so this is the starting point uff5 and uff6 is the end point and it will start at 6 and then it hits the clock pin so there are clock buffers in the clock path so there are two clock buffers so these are the two clock buffers we have mentioned in the report here and then comes the clock pin so ckn means negative edge triggered so that is negative edge of the flip-flop that is falling edge you can see f here so this is the clock pin then q pin of the flip-flop so there is 0.15 units of the delay and this becomes your total data path so far and after that there will be an inverter so this if you see in the combo you can see that there is a cdn pin so it is also negative edge triggered so that is why they have mentioned an inverter in this so that is this inverter and after that it hits the cdn pin so total data arrival time will be of this path this path till it reaches the cdn pin and that is 6.31 and after that now let's see the clock path so in clock path it will be 0 why it is 0 however it is falling at 6 but one previous rising edge is 
starting at zero. So we have explained that in the half cycle path video that is previous video. You can check out that in the link in the description below. And then after the zeroth edge, that is first edge, there is a clock buffer here you can see in the path. So that is mentioned here. And then comes the clock pin of the capture flip flop. So you can see that here there is a clock uncertainty and library removal time. Library removal time gets added that is equivalent to library hold time. Okay, so this is the minimum delay that you are expecting. Your delay, this delay data arrival time should be greater than this. And that we can see that it is greater than this minimum total this path of data required time. This is very less compared to our total data arrival time. And that is why it is meeting the slack that you can see. So that is the part of removal time. So now let us look at recovery time also quickly. So we know that removal time is actually analogous to the hold signals in asynchronous domain. Similarly, recovery is equivalent to setup in asynchronous signals that is for just the layman term. But by definition, if you look, so recovery timing check actually ensures that there is a minimum amount of time between your asynchronous signal becoming inactive and your next act active clock edge. So your asynchronous signal, let's say it is CDN here and it is active low. So there should be a minimum amount of time before this active clock edge occurs. So this minimum amount of time should be there before this changes. So maximum you are allowed to change your asynchronous signal before this edge. So let's say this is your active low signal. So it will be high. You can say that latest it can change up to this limit. So this is latest. Latest it can change by this amount of time. So this is your recovery time. This is your recovery time before the active clock edge that you are allowed to change your asynchronous signal. So it can become inactive before this amount of time. That is latest amount of time it is allowed to change. So that is by definition. Now let us quickly look at the timing report also here. So if you see this async default, that means this is asynchronous path group that is tool has created and path type max means it is going to be recovery report. You can also check here library recovery time is mentioned. So this is recovery check. Now we know that this is related to fall because this is active low signal and we have already seen that for removal also. So this will also be fall to rise check but it will be next active clock edge. So it is actually like you can see that your active clock edge, next active clock edge is this. So before that there will be certain amount of window here and that would be again similar to that recovery time. So that was launch side. This is actually in the capture side and obviously we are checking at the capture side. So this is your active clock. This is your launch side and this is your capture side. So it will be 6 to 12. Why it is falling? Because we know that this is active low flop. So this is 6 to 12. So it will be clock signal will be falling at 6 and your rising edge will be at 12 in the capture side. And you know that there are two clock buffers in the timing path in the launch side and then there is a flop. So these are these two clock buffers and then there is a flop and after that there is an inverter and then CDN signal. So we have again similar data arrival time and in the capture side there will be change now. It will not be zero that was in removal case. Here it will be total clock period that is next rising edge. So it is a half cycle path and then the clock buffers in the clock path and then there is a clock uncertainty and library removal time mentioned. And you can see that clearly your required time is now 11.98, which is with respect to this. So this is the calculation for 
your removal time and now after that your calculation for slack will be based on this required time minus removal time and slack is positive that means it is meeting that's all for this video we will see the more concepts in further videos please like share and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to give your feedback in the comment section which is very important for us thank you